I'm Indy Nidell, and this is another exciting episode of Out of the Foxholes, where I sit here in the Between Two Wars Season 2 set and answer your questions about the Second World War. Now, why am I sitting in the Between Two Wars Season 2 set? Well, because of Corona, when we film, it's only Sparty and Astrid and I. We can't have any crew, no lighting, no sound, so we have to do everything. And it takes ages to reset different uh, different sets, and we're shooting Between Two Wars today, so we're also shooting out of the foxholes right here. If you don't know what Between Two Wars Season 2 is, you should go check it out on our Time Ghost channel. Anyhow, Indiana Jones asks... What was the extent of German activity in the Pacific? Well, firstly, hello to Indiana Jones. He's actually been a regular commenter under our videos, so it is nice to see him ask a question right here. And I do feel a strange affinity to you as well, Indiana, for some other reason. But anyhow, um, unlike Britain and France, uh, after the Great War, Germany no longer has a global empire. This makes the logistics for any Pacific operations pretty tricky, but that doesn't mean that there was no German presence in the Pacific at all. For starters, nationalist China famously hosted several military attachés from Germany, led by Alexander von Falkenhausen from 1934 until his withdrawal in 1937. Ironically, it was von Falkenhausen who advised Chiang Kai-shek to fight Japan in a war of attrition, arguing that this would give China best chance of defeating the Imperial Asian power. Um, that could come back to haunt the Axis at some point. Who knows? Well, the Kriegsmarine also sees action in virtually every sea, and the Pacific Ocean is no exception. Now, Pearl Harbor being pretty recent, I mean, we're filming this in February, so it's only two and a half months ago, that means that the region hasn't actually been locked into the wider war for that long. The most significant Kriegsmarine operation in the Pacific occurred in December 1940 around the tiny island of Nauru in the Central Pacific. Now, that particular island has a rich supply of phosphorus. And phosphorus, as we all know, is important in the production of fertilizer. So Nauru is pretty important to Australia's and New Zealand's agricultural industries. Realizing this, the Kriegsmarine deploys two cruisers, Orion and Comet, flying under Japanese merchant flags to strike at the island. An initial assault on December 6 leaves five British, Australian, and Norwegian merchant ships destroyed. But weather conditions prevent German troops from landing on the island to complete the raid's objective of sabotaging the island's phosphorus facilities. Now, the expedition's leader, Robert Eisen, still wants more. After dropping off more than 100 survivors from those merchant ships on a nearby island, he orders Orion to set sail for the Marianas, and he takes Comet back to Nauru. He gets there on the 27th and bombards the island and causes significant damage to its facilities. The damage does indeed cripple Australian and New Zealand agricultural output for several months, and Allied warships are then permanently stationed just off Nauru in anticipation of another attack. But this causes an unexpected diplomatic blowback for Germany. You see, Nauru's phosphorus is also used by Japan. And when news that two German ships flying Japanese flags attacked Nauru reached Tokyo, Japan's communications to Berlin was furious, threatening to, to scale back the tripartite pact. After all, Germany had not only carried out an attack that damaged Japanese agriculture, but also risked implicating them in the attack itself. However, the Axis powers managed to put this incident behind them. That's nice, isn't it? They just had a nice talk and they put it behind them. Okay, uh, this question is asked in honor of Horace Edward Howe. I'll explain later, I assume that's not, well, I guess I will, but there looks, the prompter will explain to me. Okay, uh, what's the question? I heard a while back, I can't remember where, that between June 1941 and May 1945, not a single unwounded Red Army soldier was ever granted home leave. Is this true? And which nations were the most and least generous in terms of granting leave? Well, okay. In an army as big as the Soviet Red Army, you will obviously see exceptions for very distinguished war heroes. But, but yes, for the overwhelming majority of soldiers, their time in the Red Army 
is one of continuous service. The closest to a vacation that they'll see is it's like after after heavy combat when like badly mauled units are transferred to the rear to be rebuilt and to be refitted. On June 26, 1941, just four days after the beginning of Operation Barbarossa, the Presidium of the Supreme Soviet of the USSR issued a decree entitled on the working hours of workers and employees in wartime that canceled vacations in all state, cooperative, and public institutions and enterprises. So basically, every job. In addition, the decree also gave managers the ability to ask for up to three compulsory hours of overtime per day for individual workers, with the only exceptions being for those who were under the age of 16 and women who were more than six months pregnant. As a replacement for leave, monetary compensation was introduced, but this is impossible to receive during wartime. Um, the Soviet Union it's operating with a mindset of everything for the front, everything for victory. And it is not easy finding a facet of Soviet society not involved in the war effort in some way. So even if soldiers are allowed leave, there is the question of where they could even go. As for other nations, well, I don't really have time to go into all of them, but I can tell you that Germany, for example, is pretty generous in providing leave. At this point, Germany has not yet adopted the mindset of total war at home. And German high command, they're aware of what can happen when morale gets too low, remembering painfully the disastrous final months of the Great War. Military leave also serves an important social function. And a soldier returning home from the front, well, that's a common theme in, in Nazi cinema, acting as a sort of escapism from the war. And even... When the war strategic situation begins to change, German commanders will stay committed to providing leave. Still in October 1942, German soldiers serving on the Eastern Front are granted 20 days of continuous leave once a year. And travel time does not count against those 20 days. And now, with that question answered, here's what that dedication was about. Okay, this question was asked by a Time Ghost Army member, but he doesn't care about his name being mentioned. Instead, he has this to say. If you read this out, don't mention me. <laughs> okay, well, I already have, but without mentioning your name. Okay, forget about this guy. But rather, my grandfather, Horace Edward Howe, 1902 to 1994. He did nothing heroic. I love wondering where this is going. This is, this is going to be, I know this is going to be good. Okay. He did nothing heroic except to carry on and refuse to give in. He did volunteer for the London Auxiliary Fire Brigade and spent much of the Blitz standing on the roof of St. Paul's Cathedral acting as a fire spotter. When a district was badly hit, one of the first casualties was almost always the phone lines, meaning that it's not possible to call for help. The solution to this was to post men on vantage points to call in the fire sightings. You'll have heard that St. Paul's came through the Blitz virtually unscathed. I'm quite glad about this. And with that, I will end this episode of Out of the Foxholes. Now that last little mention of wartime cinema reminds me of episode three of our Between Two Wars season two Zeitgeist series where I talk about a film that was made with actual great war soldiers during the war. And you can check that episode out right here. And if you have a burning question about the war that you want answered, you can ask it on our community forum. The link will be in the pinned comment. Please don't ask it just here in the comments because it it may it will get lost in the pile, right? We it, ask in the community. And if you want your questions prioritized, then join the Time Ghost Army at patreon.com or timeghost.tv. That is just one of the many perks. See you next time. Mm -hmm.